This is going to be Chapter 17, Nutrition and Metabolism, Part 2. Diet and Nutrition. Uh, nutrition is the absorption of essential nutrients from food. Uh, balanced diet, another term, uh, these are all terms here, uh, contains all the nutrients needed to maintain homeostasis or balance, including adequate substrates for generating energy, essential amino acids, and fatty acids, uh, minerals, and vitamins. Malnutrition. Uh, unhealthy state that results from the inadequate or excessive intake of one or more nutrients. You can't just eat a constant amount of protein. Uh, you're going to need other things, fruits, vegetables, fiber, uh, to move this stuff through your system and get adequate nutrients out of it. Food groups and food pyramid. Uh, basic food groups are grains, vegetables, fruits, milk, and meat or beans are pro the protein group and this is from the USDA this is figure 1710 in your book this is based off of a 2000 calorie a day diet so as far as grains six ounces every day as far as vegetables two and a half cups of vegetables fruits two cups milk uh, three cups every day to get the adequate amount of calcium and whatnot um, meats and beans five and a half ounces every day Please look over the food pyramid. Uh, there should be some questions about that. Minerals, vitamins, and water. Minerals. Inorganic ions released through disassociation of electrolytes, such as sodium chloride. Um, whenever these disassociate or come apart, we get both sodium and chloride. Both of them are essential uh, ions that the body uses. Ions such as sodium chloride determine osmotic concentrations uh, of bodily fluids. Sodium is how we move water. So water follows sodium in the body and we're, we, sh we should see this used quite often in the uh, <clears throat> urology or urinary system chapter. We'll talk about that in detail. Uh, loop of Henley. <clears throat> um, ions play major roles in the physiological process, muscle contractions, action potential generation, and then neurotransmitter release. Vitamins are essential organic nutrients related to lipids and carbohydrates. They are assigned in two groups, either they're fat soluble or they're water soluble. Fat soluble vitamins, and you should remember these, A, D, E, and K. And they essentially are fat soluble, they're dissolved in lipids. Uh, water soluble, B and C, uh, water soluble vitamins are components of coenzymes, NAD, which makes NADH in the Krebs cycle, or goes into the electron transfer system is derived from niacin and coenzyme A from vitamin B5. B vitamins are pretty much essential as far as metabolism goes. Minerals, vitamins, and water continue here. Water. Daily requirements average 2500 milliliters or 10 cups. A small amount of water called metabolic water is produced in the mitochondria during the operation of the electron transport system and if we'll review the first part of this video series we'll actually see that as it is run through the TCA cycle or the Krebs cycle that we actually produce water and in the electron transfer chain that's coming out to the side we actually produce water as well. Water and CO2 are major uh, byproducts of that process. Clinical note and this is vitamin deficiencies that we're going to talk about here for a second. Um, Chronic alcoholics have a vitamin deficiency of a thiamine deficiency or vitamin B1 and this can give them two uh, syndromes if you will. Uh, Wernicke's encephal encephalopathy, neuron death, lactic acid brain edema, inflammation and white matter damage occur from Wernicke's encephalopathy. Korsakoff psychosis, um, retrograde amnesia and the inability to learn. Now both of these are kind of a deriving factor is, is thiamine deficiency and thiamine will completely reverse Wernicke's encephalopathy and we can partially get a reversal on the psychosis by giving them thiamine. Um, if you've ever transported uh, an alcoholic or whenever they get to the emergency room one of the first things they do is they hang something called a banana bag. A banana bag has electrolytes in it to kind of replenish their system and it also has a hundred milligrams of thiamine in it. 
bioenergetics. Um, areas we're going to talk about in this section the energy content of food, metabolic rate, thermal regulation, and then fire ground rehabilitation as a clinical note. So bioenergetics is how organisms acquire and use energy. Very simple term. Uh, the energy content of food. <clears throat> energy content of food can be measured with a calorie meter. Lipids release a considerable amount of energy whenever they're, they're metabolized or broken down. 9.46 calories per gram. Uh, carbohydrates, sugars, release 4.18 calories per gram. And we noticed whenever we were talking about part one here, this give us 144 ATP molecules and this give us the glycolysis breakdown give us about 36 and it cost us a little bit as well this however produces byproducts which are acidic ketones and they are acidic as far as carbohydrates are concerned uh, a little cleaner if we have all of our parts like insulin uh, we have the ability to oxygenate it and run it through the electron transfer system so a little bit more efficient to break down uh, glucose from glycogen um, but we do get more calories, more energy from fat. Uh, most foods are a mixture of fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. Metabolic rate, the sum of, of all various anabolic, anabolic and catabolic processes occurring in the body. And this is build up, and this is breakdown. So all of those together is essentially your metabolic rate. Basal metabolic rate, and this would be like if you were sitting on the couch watching TV, reflects the minimum resting energy expenditures of an awake alert person. So you're watching TV, you're not really got a lot of output, you're just running on, uh, you're just idling, so to speak. This would be your basal metabolic rate. And you have a specific amount of cal caloric expenditures that your body will just maintain uh, and, and burn by itself. Thermal regulation. Anatomical and physiological mechanisms that keep body temperatures within the acceptable limits regardless of the environmental conditions. Now obviously if we're at Alaska <clears throat> at 40 below zero we're going to have more expenditures as far as thermal regulation goes how we actually lose heat and we're going to discuss it right here is four different ways so radiation and the way that we lose heat or gain heat is heat off of the actual sun or the ambient temperature of the room conduction is direct heat loss so whenever we're speaking about conduction if we were sitting on something cold we would have a good amount of surface area that actually reduced heat or as our blood went by it would reduce the heat of our overall body. Convection, uh, air surrounding your body. If you're trying to stay warm in the winter a good idea is to layer your clothes so you have multiple layers that way if you get hot you can pull off one layer and still keep uh, a few layers actually on there. It also provides um, ambient air temperature so your body will warm the air temperature closest to it so keeping it in layers actually keeps you warmer evaporation and this is how a good way for us to reduce body heat uh, evaporation uh, water when evaporating changes from a liquid to a vapor um, if we wet the body down and we blow air across it through convection and the evaporation off of our body we lose heat as well uh, promoting heat loss is heat loss adjustment activity through the parasympathetic nervous system please make note to that so how we lose heat is done through the parasympathetic nervous system and promoting heat gain directly responds through the sympathetic uh, centers so if we're trying to warm up it's sympathetic if we're trying to cool off it's parasympathetic clinical note fire ground rehabilitation uh, pretty much whenever you're fighting fire this is very strenuous activity the use of SCBA equipment adds weight and adds more bodily uh, bodily function. So it's heavy, it's cumbersome, it adds more caloric burn to you. 
uh, 30 minutes of operation within a hazardous environment uh, can significantly increase your body temperature. With body temperature increase in protective clothing and protective equipment, we see a lot of fluid loss and sweating in that time frame. Um, people can get dehydrated, go into heat cramps, heat exhaustion, and heat stroke fairly easily uh, whenever they're in this environment. So a rehabilitation plan is always a good thing. Um, getting them fluid replenishment, uh, putting them in an area to where they can get cooled off and get out of their actual bunker gear um, is always going to be a good area. You're going to have more resources for the long term if necessary. Aging and nutrition. Clinical notes on this. Nutrition in the emergency medical services and then just nutrition and aging in general. As far as aging goes, for each decade after 50 years old, caloric requirements re reduce or decrease by about 10%. So if you're 60 years old, from whenever you were 40 years old, um, we have about a 10 to 20% caloric intake caloric intake decrease uh, at that point. Now if you're still keeping the, the same amount of caloric intake you're liable to put those and store those as lipids or fats. And then clinical note on this, nutrition in the emergency medical service system. Um, whenever we're talking about EMS and nutrition, generally speaking those two terms don't go hand in hand. Um, there's a good percentage of us that are morbidly obese uh, Fire-based services initiate exercise programs which reduce that. Uh, so we're going to see most of our uh, fire-based services with lean, lean individuals, unfortunately. Uh, a good way to combat that is to develop, if you have the ability to, is to develop a health and wellness program within the EMS service. As far as nutritional requirements from the book's perspective, uh, greens and breads, you should consume 6 to 11 servings a day. And I'm pretty sure, depending on what your basal metabolic rate is, this would actually add, uh, add fat. <laughs> Vegetables, about 3 to 5 servings. Fruits, 2 to 4 servings. Dietary products, 2 to 3 servings. Meat and fish, 2 to 3 servings. Uh, according to the book. So please look over these. I believe um, newer technology and newer insight uh, can be obtained through the USDA as far as nutritional uh, servings and the food pyramid. We're almost done with this. Uh, terms to know, and these are terms for the entire chapter. Aerobic metabolism, going to need to know what that is so with oxygen. Basal metabolic rate, you're watching TV and you have a consistent calorie burn, calorie, uh, our version or a meter that gauges um, energy that might possibly be produced by specific amounts of food or servings of food. Electron transport system, that's where we make most of our uh, ATP at. Glycogen, glycolysis, metabolic turnover, metabolism, uh, nutrients and nutrition. Be sure to know all those terms. Thermal regulation, uh, tricarboxylic, or Krebs cycle, and then vitamin. This is going to end part two. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me, 405-219-7613, or smithardimsa.net. Thank you.